Hi, everyone. I can't believe we're already on to episode two. Time does fly. I'm getting excited as the storyline progresses. Um, before I actually get started, I just want to say hi to everyone. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> yes, Kat, you're no longer Morgan. <laughs> Hello. And I love that you're all talking to each other, saying hi. It's like friends getting together, which is funny because what about the scene where there's Lucas and he's doing like a, someone last night called it that, you know, like a, a Zoom call back in the day where they were all hooked in Ned and he was like the host of it all operating the uh, telephone. And um, it was Ned and Rosemary and Lee and Lucas and Bill and Mike. I love that. I thought that was great. That was cute. Hi, Barbara Ann. She's saying, hi, Roxanne. Hello, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. I have a lot to cover. Um, I want to talk about the pacing. And I want to talk about um, the big things for me. And I want your opinions on them are the storylines of can we talk a little bit about Lucas's office somewhere around there? I want to get that in. But the two big scene stealers, there were two, and I'll talk more about that. And that was the planning of Nathan's party and also who shot the governor. Those were the two big scene stealers, and we'll talk about that. And then, of course, there's Lily with Faith. I love how that storyline's coming along. And Mike and May, it's like the little romance I didn't know I wanted or needed, rather. And, of course, Elizabeth and Nathan, Nathan's relationship. There was some in, some interesting things, I'm, uh, you know, in my opinion. And um, then there were little tidbits of things. I love how they they touched on even more storylines to come. They keep hinting. And I'm waiting for it to like go full force. Yes, Gene, let's talk about the picture on his desk. Okay, all right. So since we're here and everyone's already kind of said hello and hi to our, each other, I'm going to share real quick this. Now, it, it's kind of distorted because I really was trying to get up on the, um, on the photograph that's in the back corner. And I remember when this was taken, they, um, they, it, we, last season, we got to see it all throughout Elizabeth's house and Lucas's office where it was them as a family. But now that they're, you know, not getting married, I love that Lucas has his cousin. Remember when he took that, he and his cousin, and we don't get to see Gustav. We did get to hear him though. And I swear that that was like someone like Peter DeLuise in the background doing like a, an accent and having like um, Gustav having a moment. And I remember Mike had to go run back there and help him. And it was just when Gustav was mentioning grilled cheese, which I thought was ironic that grilled cheese was the biggest seller and they made so much money on it. It made me want to eat a grilled cheese. But anyway, um, let's see. Yeah. The voice that that wasn't Gustav. We know, we know it's not him. The actual actor Avis is not, um, he's not even on social media anymore, but I love how they keep him alive. They, they talk about him in episode one. And again, they talk about him in episode two, which is, you know, a link to Lucas, just like they keep other, um, uh, Fiona, they mentioned Fiona in episode one and in episode two, cause she has a link with faith, which I thought was sweet. I love how they do that. Um, let's see. What's this? Hi, everyone. I'm always here lurking, but never commenting. Love this podcast. Well, hello. I'm glad that you're here and you're going to comment. All right. All righty. Um, was that at the end of one of the Christmas shows? No, Jean. That picture was taken when they, it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was from season nine when they were doing, was it season nine? Remember they were doing, um, the holidays of Hope Valley and they did like a Thanksgiving and then the camera just came and they were all taking family photos. I mean, there was even one with May and, um, Allie and Nathan, they took one. And, um, of course the cultures, they, I don't know. It was cute. I think that's what it's from. Everybody was jumping in, taking all kinds of cool pictures. Yes. Hope Valley days. Thank you, Rona. Yes, 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 you're saying. All right. Okay, so anyway, I thought that was cute and interesting. And I was saying last night, I really want to like 
anytime there's a new set, I want to like get in and, and see and, and all the little particulars that they have in there. Cause I feel like, um, I don't know, it's insight into the character and the set director and, and designer. They're very, very good at what they do. And I, I love it. I just think it's cool. Um, it says, looks like Lucas shed the cufflinks can, uh, on this, what the second button. I don't know. Not sure. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll take this back, take this back for now. Um, okay. So what did I want to dive into first? I have a list. Um, I wanted to talk about the conversation that Lucas had. And I thought it was funny because, um, we have Bill who's being all grumpy about it and he he's mad because he doesn't know if he wants this project to come to the town and, 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 you know, they're all worried. And then when they get on the phone with him and he says, this is our town, I'm going to need your help. I want to know how you feel. We don't have to do it. Oh no. Ned's like, Oh no, everybody. There was a lot of, I think Derek wrote this. There was a lot of, again, one liners, quite a bit of humor. And um, I, I, I'll, point all those out but it i thought that that was funny where he's a jolly good fellow yes avis you're ahead of the game here honey now here's the thing i go in order that's just how my brain is so when you put things up uh, ahead of me i won't be able to see them so repeat them i don't mind if you repeat it if i'm not addressing it keep repeating it and hopefully it'll catch my eye all right so um I found that conversation interesting and it's the only time we get to see Lucas until the very end. And I felt like we were still going to get a, um, a shot of him, but I wasn't sure how they were going to do it. So they sort of sandwiched it in. I found the writing and the organization of this episode. Very interesting. Interesting that the two storylines that dominated, as I was saying, if um, you weren't seeing these particular characters like Lucas or Nathan, it was about Lucas or Nathan. So let's see. Um, the shooter conversation came up eight different times. It was in eight different scenes and actually a little bit more because the one scene, which I loved, was Lee having a conversation with his wife. I love how he supports her. And Bill having a conversation with Henry. That was hilarious and Bill's facial expressions and then back to Rosemary and Lee back to Bill and Henry and that kind of like took it off into a rabbit hole but that was funny so there were at least at least eight eight scenes dedicated to this whole who shot um Lucas even Nathan and Allie have a conversation about it Elizabeth finally has a conversation about it with um Rosemary and I was like, oh, finally, someone's like, uh, she was like, well, is is he going to be okay? You you think he's in danger? And then um, she's like, well, you know, he's in Capital City, he should be okay. And then all of a sudden, her brain goes off and she's ready to plan a party. And I thought, okay, that was short lived. Woohoo! So I don't know. I thought that was funny. And then the Nathan, then it was twelve. I counted, and up until they actually had the party. There were 12 different scenes with all kinds of interactions. Rosemary and Elizabeth, Nathan and Allie, Elizabeth and Nathan, Allie and Elizabeth. Um, then there was like, you know, the bigger where they were. Minnie was involved with Elizabeth and Molly and Angela. And, you know, it just went on and on. Um, and they kept flipping back and forth between the two, which was kind of like a dance. And then, of course the end, but we're not there yet. Um, let's see, Christina. Yeah. So much, uh, for Lucas being, uh, the safe choice. Uh, oh, I know. Right. Which we, we all, we all keep throwing that one around. Um, Kathy says, Roxanne, I can see clips. Why are Elizabeth and Rosemary leaving both their kids with Robert? <laughs> Can't they find an adult babysitter? Okay. Let's talk about that. That was one of my favorite lines that was there. Robert is an adult. He's a young adult. And he and Robert does all kinds of jobs. I mean, did besides mailing, doing the mail and then helping out. Well, they don't really have the soda. I mean, she had to use the key faith to get into it. The, um, the soda fountain hasn't been really working. Maybe when it gets warmer, I don't know what's going on with the pharmacy, but now he's cutting hair. And as they're leaving, and he's watching both kids 
Rosemary says, I mean, uh, Elizabeth said to her, as long as he doesn't do a practice haircut on them. And Rosemary's like, oh my God, I thought that was great. There was a lot of fun, fun humor in there. Yeah, I know. I can't see Robert cutting hair. I want to see him cutting some people's hair. And yes, Carrie has about a hundred jobs. It's like a running joke that they do. Oh my goodness. Um, it's interesting. A lot of people are wanting Nathan and Elizabeth's relationship to go faster, which wouldn't be true to real life as it's only been like four months. I agree with them slowing it down. Uh, mm, that's how I feel. It's moving. <laughs> like, mm, and it's always a, a look, a look. And then a look, it reminds me of those soap operas, and I don't want this to be a soap opera, where they'd zero in on their face, they'd say two words, and then it go to commercial. And they say, I can't, I can't stand that pace. And, and they need, I need a little bit more. It's just too much, but whatever. He's attending an online course to learn how to cut hair. <laughs> but it's a correspondence course. <laughs> He's a jack of all trades. You know who he reminds me of? A, long, a young Mike Hickam. That is exactly how Mike was. And he has an innocence and a sweetness. Let's talk about Mike. Let's talk about Mike and May. Let me see if I can. Did I take it out of order? Hold on. I got, you know, me and my order. What, what do I have next? I do. Look at this. This little broken hearted face. Okay. He's such a kind and sweet and innocent soul. And and he's so in love with May and he's so giving and sweet to her. And I feel that she is too very much in love with him. That came out more in the, con I'm sorry, I'm shouting. That came out more in the conversation that she had with Faith and it scared her, which I thought was adorable. And I really like how their storyline's going. And tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me what you think. Um, do you think that they're the couple that's going to get married. Cause I thought that there was a mention of a, a wedding and, and I, I could, that could, you know, what? I never heard, I never heard any of the actors nor anybody from production say that. And I may have missed it, but if there is a wedding, do you feel like it's Mike and May only because Bill keeps running around calling them like the newlyweds, the old married couple. He's like a bully. Bill's got to stop. He's being a bully. What do you think? Kathleen? Yes, I think um, Mike and May get married this season. Um, yes, Jeffrey did do a number on um, on May. Um, I go to Kit Carrie's and I get somebody else's. Yes, I agree. But Mike got scared. She's pushing him away. And I know And they do the crossword puzzle together. And he's just such a gentle, sweet soul with her. And she says that. And I'm glad that she finally talks to him about it. And he's like, well, I was just going to ask you to dance. So I think they've kind of cleared the air. He understands where she's coming from. He is a very patient man. And I don't think that May is used to being treated so kindly, which, which I I'm looking forward to seeing her kind of blossom in that. Yeah. I can see them getting married. Brian Bird said, okay, Brian Bird said we're getting a wedding this season. I think it's them. Uh, Martha, I got an invitation to the wedding. Okay, Martha. All right, Martha, then it's, then it's a thing. Okay. My, uh, May and Mike. All right, good. I'm, I'm in agreement with that. And probably at the end, do you think it'll be towards the end? Hmm. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm loving it. I do like the May storyline as per her struggles as is as real to life. It's true. How many, I mean, how many of us have been there? Like when something is so good that you get scared, right? And, 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 and you, or you're afraid and you back away. And I, and that's, I guess what May's doing. And she's kind of like burying herself in her job to keep herself occupied. And again, I don't think she's used to having that unit. She's got a unit now around her with, with friends between, well, Fiona is not there, but definitely with faith and May they're living like a family. Um, with little Lily now, which we can talk about them. That's my other story that I love. Um, me too, Ro uh, Roxanne, it, it, or it's so refreshing. Okay. Um, there are several pictures of different females wearing pink satin dresses. I know we talked a little bit about that before. So closer to the end, you're thinking, okay, we're, we're sticking to that. We're allowed to change our predictions. As I tell my students, as more comes along. So we'll see, but for now, 
I, I'm I'm all in with that. And I'm oh, I'm looking forward to it. Now, what about Lily and Faith? Oh my God, she read her that story about Rebecca, and I think it's the Rebecca story, and how she had such a big family, and little little Lily's asking about her family and, and who like is taking care of her. And I'm curious to see what Lily's story is. We know that Grandma's been taking care of her, but I wonder what happened with her mother and father. And um, now Faith, I wonder. Well, do you think they'll heal? Grandmother will get to be healed. And she'll get get healthy and come back and be a part of maybe even Faith's life. Or do you think um, it's going to be just Lily and Faith? I just, the little girl's dynamite. She is dynamite. Um, when Faith went out to the outskirts of town to see patients, Mike wanted to be Faith's escort, I think, in season 10. What happened to that interest? Um, I don't know. I don't think it went away. I think... He he was protective of her. They were good friends. It was he was friendly even with Fiona. He's like that. He's very protective. And then we found out why he's so protective. And that has to do with um, remember, he has sisters and he's been raised by like eight of them or something. I hope we get to see some of them this season. That would be fun. Um, okay. I just love Lily and Faith. I love Lily and Faith storyline. So cute. Do you think um the pink dress is for the wedding? I don't know. Could be. Yeah, I moved on from that. I'm sorry. Um, I'll go back and forth. I know things have a little bit of a delay. Andrea is so good in this role with the Lily story. She's a natural. It's true. I love, I love Andrea. I think she's, I'm so glad that that's her love interest. Do you know what I mean? Like ever since she's been on this show, she came as engaged and that didn't work out. And then she had a, a few dates, you know, with different people that didn't work out. One was kind of abusive, the Ray from the railroad. And then all that went on with Carson and that was her growing up and changing. And um, I don't know, I always found her to be such an interesting character. And I like when you have such a strong female protagonist and she's smart, she's a doctor, she's in a position that many people at that time didn't have, but you can still have everything. And I love that they're showing that she could be a mom too. And she's talking about real life things like she's <laughs> making a peanut butter and jam sandwich. You know what I mean? Like that's what she'll eat. I'm giving it to her. Let the kid eat that, you know, like whatever... Whatever works for you at the time. No mom guilt there. <laughs> I think grandmother dies and Faith adopts little Lily. Oh, Jean, that will be sad. I think. I think eventually Faith will adopt Lily. Okay. I never heard Carson returns. I, I didn't hear that either. Someone's saying that? Oh, I heard Carson returns this season. Maybe that will change what happens with Faith. I didn't hear that. I wonder, you know what, please, LJ, I'm not making fun of you. I'm I'm just, and I'm just saying this. Please don't make it be those clickbait things that you find on YouTube. Don't, don't listen to those. Those are not good. Don't, don't do that. If that's where you're hearing it from. If you're hearing it from an actor or a producer, or if it's on the official Hardys, because they never put something that's not true then um then it's a go but i i haven't heard that i could have missed it i've been a busy girl um judy saying i agree with you roxanne about the dramatic soap opera gaze as they go into commercial oh we'll get to that judy um okay lil faith and lily story so far yes and i feel like we'll get even more and more i do remember that they decide to come up with like a daycare and that makes sense because we've got elizabeth and and Rosemary trying to tag team with um, with uh, Robert and with Allie. <laughs> and they're hoping everything's okay. But let's face it, they're not that far away from each other. And then now we've got little Lily. So I think that would be fun to see how that goes. Um, yes, Faith had her ups and downs. And I think they are right to have her in a solid relationship of true love in Lily. I know. I know. I love that. I'm liking Faith's period dresses. Oh, I know. I'm also liking the pants she had on the other day, but she always gets to be a little more modern. She's always said that. And and Barbara um, does a great job with the costumes. They're fun. They're not always 100% accurate, but we know that. We know that we've switched it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, what do I have next? 
besides that sad little face there. I had something. Okay. Okay. Good. I wanted to talk about this. So I found this interesting. Um, Elizabeth is kind of thrown into planning this party that she knows poor Nathan does not want, but I get why she does it because in the end, Allie wants it. So it's important. And, and I like that, but here's the thing. Um, yes, May was wearing pants too, Cindy. I know. Um, here's the thing that I thought was weird. Um, and I'm not putting down the relationship. I do think the relationship is just all odd because you know how I'm feeling if listen, if you don't feel that way, it is okay. Um, when I say these things, sometimes um, people flip away. There's no need to flip away. We can all disagree on stuff. But as I view Elizabeth, and I've repeated this before, she comes as a woman who's crying her eyeballs out uh, uh, just four months ago over her dead husband. But all the time she's in her house having intimate conversations with another man and she's engaged. And she was passionately kissing that man. And, and I just, I, her character confuses me. So now we have four months later and they're planning this party for, um, Nathan and little Jack, uh, is drawing a picture and it's of them as a family. Here's what I find a little odd. We never got to see that. I don't like to be told things. I like to see it. I've never seen the four of them together. Is it something he's wishing for? And if he is wishing for it, how did that come about? I know there's some, there was a little bit of last season when they were playing in the grass and it was um, with the dog and Allie and, and Nathan and little Jack. I remember that, but I don't really see a lot of interaction and we need to see that, especially if he's going to be drawing a card and she's going to moon over it. Look at her face. She's just mooning over this. Like this is something that she wants. So um, let's see. Let's see. I don't think I go. Well, every time I go to click on one, it goes away. I don't think they should have made him draw the card. I think it's too soon. Um, yes, I agree with Cindy. It should have been Elizabeth, LJ and Lucas. Oh, Listen, we know that story. We're, we're, um, I got to move on from that one, okay? I'm not saying you're not valid in your feelings, but I'm just trying to address what's going on now. Teresa, okay, I agree with you because when I saw that card, I thought, you know, as close as LJ was to Lucas, I can't believe they're not running a, running a storyline. He has to be sad that he's lost his buddy. And we did get to see him in the very beginning sitting on his buddy's lap and when he was healing and whatnot. And um, I know, I just thought that this was, I don't know, didn't make sense to me. Sorry, sorry, I do love you, Derek. I love you. And I have to say, you know, when I say this stuff, people crack me up. And I'm not saying this because, um, oh, listen to me. Like I said this last night, I am just some girl in a small town um, in South Jersey. Okay. Loving this show from the get-go. And this is my passion. But my point is, I cannot tell you how many people pay attention to what I have to say, because then they try to turn it around and use it against me. And I'm like, where'd that come from? You, oh, well, thank you for joining my podcast and listening, but you didn't listen correctly and you misquoted me. But anyway, so, hey. All right. Um, I was chatting with someone earlier. We agree that we're having a hard time with the new Elizabeth haircut. I just see Aaron. Eh, it doesn't bother me, the haircut. I, I feel like she needs to be with the times a little bit, you know? And I think they want her to have like a new, new haircut. I remember um, Aaron said it's a breakup haircut. You know, that's what she said in her interview. The picture could be little Jack wanting a true family versus Elizabeth. And he would have liked it either way, Lucas or Nathan. Robin, that's a good perspective. But he actually said who all those people were. He said that that's me and you with Allie and um, Mountie Nate. He said that. So, and I don't know if those are some pigs or dogs in that background there. <laughs> the dog, definitely. When I saw Elizabeth with that short hair, it makes me, makes her look like Erin Krako. Well, she is Erin Krako. <laughs> Oh, okay. Yes. And we can see everyone's ankles now. Yes, we can. It's scandalous. <laughs> all right. So anyway, that was just, I just thought that was a little bit odd. That's all. It's okay. Now, um, one of the things that I found interesting 
was, um, let's see if we can, I'll move ahead with this. And I want to hear what you all think. What I found interesting was how, and I know I'm, I'm, miss, I'm skipping ahead of certain things, was when they finally got to the party, the whole town was there. And I'm thinking to myself, why is the whole town there for a random birthday party? I know it got out of hand and, and all of that. But um, I just thought it was weird. Like, I don't understand why it was a party to bring them together. I get why they would bring them together and then have some angst afterwards uh, because Lucas is there. I'm just trying to figure it out. Like, I, I don't know. So me as a writer, whenever you write something, it's to advance the storyline. I get how the conversation with Bill and the conversation, and we'll talk more about that with Rosemary and the whole buying of the of the saloon and all that, but I don't get the birthday party. Uh, they to put these two together, I guess is that why they they wanted to create something that would draw them together? I don't know. Tanya, what do you say? What do you mean so true, Tanya? Oh, we're still talking about Aaron's hair. I like the haircut. It makes it easier for me to see her as Lizzie, another character. She is different. Yes, she is. Um, um, yes, her haircut needed to happen to keep up with the rest of the town's beautiful women in the 1920s. I agree. Okay. Um, I I think that the dog and Sergeant and Newton. Ah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Agree seemed off. I, I just, it didn't fit into the flow. I thought it was strange. Other than. Other than the dynamic of 12 scenes of conversations of planning Nathan's party with Elizabeth and eight scenes of who shot Lucas, 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 Lucas. I don't know. And the other thing, too, is that more than one time Elizabeth has said, I'm so glad he's home. I'm so glad he's home. And she says it again. I'm so glad he's finally home. He was gone for three months to help with you know, figuring out what went down with um, the shooting of Lucas. And um, I was like, hmm, that's interesting because remember, she didn't want to leave her town because, you know, it was, she didn't even want to move. She wanted to be right next door to, um, to Rosemary. The thought of being across the field <laughs> was like upsetting for her. And yet, her heart is with a man who could on a dime be sent away. He was gone for three months. He could move away. He could have to be, you know, working in, as a matter of fact, when people quote about the books, oh, it's going back to the books, the books. Okay. Well, the books were not even about this. Elizabeth it was about her aunt and, um, their, their marriage was kind of on the rocks or struggled because they never stayed in one place. They were around all over the place. So, I don't know. I thought that this, that was, I don't know. I thought it's weird where she keeps saying he's home. He's home. She says it a lot. Um, she threw him a party in her ex fiance saloon. I saw that expression as guilt that I want to talk about these in a minute, these expressions. That's true. It almost seemed like everyone was there for Lucas and a small amount of friends for Nathan's birthday as he came down the saloon stairs versus the front door. But I love the ending. Okay. So, um, Let's see. Derek used the party. Thank you, Tanya. Derek used the party to get everyone at the saloon for the governor's grand return. Why couldn't they get everybody at the saloon for something to celebrate about the, um, the you know, having to maybe lose or keep the uh, saloon? You know, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess that's what it is. So they get there. They don't want this to be a competition about, you know, um, who's the better choice. It doesn't matter because I can say that Lucas is the better choice and someone could sit next to me and say that that um, Nathan's a better choice and we could point out 5,052 things but you're not changing anybody's minds. So it's like politics. My point is we got to move on with the storyline here. And I was just trying to figure out what that what that vessel was or what that navigation tool was. And that, that makes sense. Yes, Roxanne, agree. I am not sure what all that means. The three months as it seemed to refer to both of them. I know it's like, I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's back. Okay. Uh, okay. So I don't know. I'm, I don't, they keep saying that. So I'm wondering if that's part of their angst is, is Elizabeth going to start? Is she totally okay and comfortable? 
with um, him being in danger and having to go somewhere? Are we going to see that at all in this season? Is it building towards that? Are those little hints? I don't know. When something repeats, I always look. Yeah. How dare Lucas show up at Nathan's and, at, and steal Nathan's thunder? That's not me. I saw that comment. <laughs> That's how the writers wrote it. How dare he? I don't know how he could because, first of all, this is a regular birthday party. They already sang him happy birthday early on on purpose. And then the, oh, um, there, you know, you're the man of the hour. I love when she said that. And then they walked in and the man of the hour was somebody totally different on the on the steps. Again, it is not a cut to the Nathan character. It is because it's going to cause conflict with Nathan and um, Elizabeth, which will push their storyline forward because he's going to assume he even says something to her in the in the promos where she's like uh, she's worried about him. And he I mean, let's face it. This man's been through it with her, you know, so I think that's how they're addressing that. Um, yeah. I know. Um, did everyone know that Lucas was coming to town? Did he just come from the back entrance from the balcony? Did Mike just know? I don't know. He has to come back because he's selling. He's got to sign papers and he's selling. Um, and he's probably got to sign a lot of papers and he's selling his um, saloon. So that is why he's back. But the stairwell, you know, you can get in from the downstairs too, off to the side where the, the, they put, bring in the vegetables and things. We've seen that not far from his office. He could have gone upstairs to freshen up and came back down. He may have done it quietly um, to come in, you know, because I guess they do that for protection because he is the governor. So it could be that. Um, there is a small part of me that wishes the governor would have Nathan transferred. I know that sounds mean and will not happen. <laughs> Oh, people, people, don't be so mean. We can rise above this. All right. So I don't know. Um, now these expressions, like seconds later, they're both, she looks like a nervous wreck. I know Erin's face of when she's nervous. And I mean, Erin, the actress, when she's trying to do being nervous and Nathan, his face is like, mm, like you're back. And you think about it since they broke up. Lucas has not been back. Now, Lucas had his core people there for him. He had Elizabeth with, I know, don't freak out, with LJ and Rosemary and Bill and Lee and even Goldie were all there in his room. They were there for him to heal. We, you know, we, we saw some of that and then heard, listened, but it's been four months and they have not had a chance, the town, to say thank you for saving our town and being governor. So this is why he's, you know, the man of the hour. I think Derek was being very humorous to create the tension. He creates a surprise party that is not by that time a surprise. And the real surprise is the governor, Tanya, I know. And also Derek likes to make sure everything revolves around Elizabeth. And a lot of these storylines did. There was that conversation. What did you all think about that conversation that she had with Henry? Henry's conversation even with Bill, even though it went to to manure, <laughs> uh, uh, horse poo. Even it went to, even though it went to that, he was still talking about the um, hazelnuts. And if I'm not mistaken, I think they have. There's really hazelnut trees on that farm, uh, in real life. And um, also, he talks about the trees that Abigail was, you know, used to use them in her baking when he's talking to Joseph. And he has that whole conversation with Elizabeth, where Elizabeth says. You know, I talked to Abigail. She told me how much you had to say, and you normally don't have a lot to say. And he goes, she wants me to be happy. And she's like, I'm surprised you came back. And he's like, well, she wants me to be happy. I'm not like, you know, more or less that he's not sure where he's going. So I'm wondering where, where is that going? You know where it's going to go? He is going to hook up and he is going to work for the governor. What do you think? Um, Tanya saying again, I love Derek's whole script for this episode. It reminds me of what a good writer he is despite season 10, which is not his fault. Okay. And Judy, it seems like yesterday when Lucas was trying to keep Elizabeth from the surprise party. Yes, I know. I know. And they flipped that all around, which is funny. She still needs to return that large diamond. They still need to have a conversation. The town doesn't even really know what went down or what happened, you know? Yeah. Hmm. And I wonder 
where they're going with Henry. I do too. I feel like it's all over the place. Any predictions? What do you think? What do you think is going to go down? Do you think that Henry and Abigail will have a long, like a long distance relationship? I don't know. Faith loves beans. You know what, Jay Bishop? That's funny that you put that in there, but Faith does love beans. She talked about that before. Um, Henry, okay. Henry, he's going to work on Abigail's trees to restore them. Yes. Yes. And you love the Abigail references. It puts a smile on Henry's face. Yeah. He's extremely happy. He is. Um, Henry will end up helping Lucas. Lillian, I agree. Um, Kathy saying, um, it feels like he's leaving, but with Abigail, I don't know. She said, I thought you would have stayed. Nathan looked sad. Like, oh yes, now I have to face the tension amongst the three of them, but not a triangle, just moving from Lucas and Elizabeth breakup. Yes. There needs to be a few conversations. I agree. And it's going to happen. I remember Chris in his interview saying that there's even, it's a spoiler alert. There's even a point where he says, um, yeah. Uh, you know, don't, don't worry on my, don't be, you know, tiptoeing around on my account. Just like, go ahead, go with it. Um, hold on. I just want to make sure I have, uh, some of the things that I wanted to point out. Um, oh gosh, the, the, the humor that was in, in this, um, like, Bill had the best lines. I want Bill's, I want Bill's, I want Bill's lines. He's walking around and he sees, oh, sees um, poor May and Mike and Mike, he realizes what's going on with Mike. And he's like, how's that going for you? And then Mike spills his guts. Then he turns around and walks across the street and there's Lily running away from Faith. And he's like, how's that going for you? You know, like he's like a piece of work. Then the whole conversation that he has sitting at the bar with Henry and, and Henry says, um, uh, what's he say? Uh, horse manure like that. And he looks at him in this face, like, what are you reading? He goes, I need horse manure and a lot of it. And he's like, what? he's like disgusted by it. He can't let it go. There's one line that is the line. That's my favorite. This one is my favorite. Rosemary and Bill are walking and he's like, are you Rosemary, my friend or Rosemary, the reporter? And then she answered a question, asked a question. He goes, are you Rosemary, the reporter? And he, and she gets mad at him. Like she seriously is mad at him. Not her whiny self. She, he's like, well, what do you want to scoop? And she goes, no, I'm trying to figure out who tried to, the, to a murder, the attempted murder of my good dear friend, our good dear friend. And I'm like, yes. Thank you. Yes, I know. Um, what's Bill's role as leadership in the town? He's the mayor, Catherine. He's still the mayor. Chris said there would be, Chris said that there would be Nathan miscues convos out of context over here. Yes, 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 yes. You were right. You're right. Henry and Lucas are great together. I think they're making him the gardener for now as another way to show the contrast that will happen when he helps Lucas later, laborer to boss. I, I, I feel like I'm on the same page with you, Tanya. The little girl um, playing Lily is a beautiful child, such a, such a great little actress. She is. She is, she is, she is. Okay, um... I have some little things. I saw some little hints of things that are coming. Little Billy or the young, young Billy. Do you, I think, could there be the possibility that he has a learning disability or he's dyslexic because there was how he's struggling with his math. And maybe that will be a storyline with Elizabeth and the children because we kind of just lost that. And I, I would like to see that come back. And then there's also Toby. I don't know what Billy, I think Billy is his real name. It is. It's Toby. Sorry. Toby is his real name. And then um, there's also a little hint about maybe Minnie trying to find out who she is. She's having a little bit of a crisis identity. And she's like, they, everybody thinks I should be giving them advice. Um, or they come to me for advice because I'm the pastor's wife. And he's like, yeah, but I love how he's. I love those two. I love how he says to her, you're, you know, you're my, um, uh, you're like, he says you're close to perfect is what he says to her. And I thought that was so, so cute. 
I think you are correct, Roxanne, about how they're causing conflict to get the storyline to going through to the season with, um, yes. And I, I think that's what's happening. Um, Again, back to like there was that little Billy's thing that might be coming. Um, I really liked how the the Coulter's story started in the beginning and it ended at the end. And I love it. I love that couple because that couple always signifies true love through every season. I mean, I know we've had Elizabeth with um, Jack and all of that, but they are truly in love. They are truly partners. They respect each other tremendously, faults and all. So in the beginning, they're, you know, growing pains as a family, need to spend time to, with each other. Lee looks like he's preoccupied and it it seems like he doesn't have time for his wife because he misses breakfast date, he misses lunch date. But what he's really doing in the end is trying to set things together so that he can spend more time with his wife. And in the end goes, go ahead, say it, say it. And then she goes, have more time for your family. And it was one of their juiciest kisses they've had in a long time. Cause usually they're like, mm, but that was a juicy kiss. I like that kiss. So, um, those two went like full circle. And then he even says, well, come on, let me help you. And he makes her like crime board for her and he has it all set up. And that's when they do that side by side with, She's talking it out with Lee of what could have happened to Lucas. And then he and then Bill and Henry are kind of talking it out. So I loved it. Yes, Winnie and Joseph are just beautiful souls in the show. So amazing. They are. And we're going to see more of them. I even think we get to see some maybe I don't know if it's her family members or his family members coming. Something's, you know, coming down the pike there. Um yeah, they were great together in that movie. That movie was good. That movie has the ability to be like a recurring mystery movie. I don't know. I loved it. And I love that Viv said he loved his badge, <laughs> walking around with his badge. That was cute. It was cute. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. I thought their kiss was awkward. Who? Lee and Rosemary? Oh, no, because she was really, she had her hands behind his head, and she really just, she usually just goes, mm, and they give them, like, a cute, I've been together forever kind of kiss, but they had a cute little kiss. I love the murder board. <laughs> That's funny. So, anyway, they had a whole storyline that came to an end, which which I love. So, um, before we go... I wanted to know some predictions. So we already have, I said, um, um, I said, Grace is not her name, but it is her essence. She tweeted how much she loves playing Minnie. Oh, sweet. Yeah. And Robin say, yes, Roxanne. So they can be together more often and love them as owners in, um, in place of Lucas for the salon, uh, saloon. Yes, 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 yes. Um, does anyone know? If Tom Thornton is coming to Hope Valley, yes, he is. And he will be in two episodes and they're later. And it's these episodes are what I unite um, Nathan and Elizabeth together. It's like they work on something together and I probably will draw them closer together, which I find interesting because that is what always would happen with Elizabeth and um, uh, Jack. They would be why they'd wind up together, especially when the sister and brother were involved. Um, what question do you think L asks E? No, I don't know. I, I, I was wondering for a while if it has to do with her land. Would she be willing to use some of her land in this land deal? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. Yes. You'll miss him as a saloon owner. Who knows how long that will be or how long he'll be the governor? Who knows? He could be a silent partner. Well, he can't be a silent partner because of what happens. He'll be around. It'll be okay. Um, what's this? I still think Hargraves has something to do with the shooting. Let's talk about the shooting. And let's see what people are saying. Does anyone think that Lucas is sad about having to sell the saloon and it's just one more sadness he has to deal with? Kind of. I said that yesterday. Kind of. Maybe. And I'm going to eat my little mini birthday cakes. They're actually macarons, which Lucas served before. I love them. Anyway, it's my little dessert for the birthday. Um, could be. So let's talk about who. Okay, Montague. It seems like Montague's involved, but I think that there's more to it than that. Because if it was just cut and dried Montague, they wouldn't be dragging it out. 
And I don't know if anyone saw the previews, but in the previews, Bill actually uses his forensic science and he's timing it and he's running to, I guess, where they found the gun and running back and he knows it can't be. So I think it's going to be interesting. And what about, we already did our prediction, predictions for May and Mike and Faith um, and even Nathan and Elizabeth. And maybe even little Billy. What do you think they've got going down the road for um for Allie? What do you think? Because they keep Nathan keeps saying how she's so distant from him. She's growing up and she's distant. I think it's more than just she's growing up. And then she was asking about her mother again. And we haven't heard her do that in a long time. She did it when she was younger, and it's happening again. I think they're gearing up for something. Yeah. Do you think Edwin is strange? Hmm. Maybe. Yes. Bill says someone is lying. I think quite a few people are not telling the truth. Maybe she's wondering about her dad. I think I heard, I think Kevin talked about, he thought it was a great thing for Jada. She goes to see her, her father and it doesn't turn out to be like he, she thought it would be. And Elizabeth helps with that. Well, that's that family dynamic they're trying to grow. Lucas is showing that he is willing to sacrifice almost anything for love and the greater good. Even the Queen of Hearts, which um, brought him to Hope Valley. He really, he already has lost the Queen of Hearts. All right. Um, Jeanette, yep. She either knows something, helps him with something, does something. She comes out of the hiding because we've never seen her and he hasn't had a chance to talk to her for a while. Yes, Lillian. Kevin said Jada has a big storyline this season about her birth father. Good. wonder if they have the same guy. Roxanne, do you think that Jeanette was at the scene of the shooting? Mm. Well, um, I had a theory and I shared it last night. For those of you that don't don't join in on that, I do something that focuses just on Lucas right after the episode. Um, I'm just saying this could be, this could be a theory. I have no idea. And the more I learn, I mean, it's only season two. I mean, episode two. What if when he comes out, he's like, what are you doing here? You know what I mean? And it's Jeanette, like a surprise. And then he gets shot, but it's not Jeanette. Someone from behind or the side would kind of distract him. And that's why he's not saying anything because he's not quite sure what happened. And he doesn't, he doesn't know where she is or what happened or if she came out of hiding. I don't know. And also, um, they could very easily make Lucas something like a secret agent from back in the day or something. We always thought that kind of stuff. But maybe it's not that Jeanette was underhanded because I remember in one of the Hardy's official things they were asking something and they were trying to say is she like the spider and 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 it I think it was Beth who's like mm, I don't that's not how she, how she's being portrayed so we'll see how that goes it could have been that she was there at the wrong place at the wrong time and I don't know I don't know there's just something not right there because he doesn't ever want to talk about it especially when they were on the phone they all slammed the phone down and Rosemary's like, nobody wants to talk about it, even Lucas. So I think there's a little bit something going on there. This is off topic. Okay. But I never realized how pushy E.T. is. Aaron looked generally uncomfortable in that last interview. E.T. Entertainment. Oh, I don't know. I don't think they're really pushy at all. I think they're silly. Um. I, I know what you mean, Kathy. I'm not poo-pooing what you're saying. I just, I know. I'm, yes, I agree. I'm trying to be good here. <laughs> be careful of what I say because people like to misquote me. Um, you teased us a, uh, You teased us last night. Who do you think is playing Jeanette? Mm. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. I will tell you this. I promise you right here since people pay attention to what I say. Um, and I, I say that a lot and I'm going to address something with ratings before I go, because it's almost, I try to keep us like in an hour. Um, Jeanette, Annette, you don't know who Jeanette is here. Let's refresh you. Jeanette, we met Jeanette without really meeting her. 
when we first met Lucas. She is a friend that he tried to save um, uh, when uh, Amos Dixon or Dixon Amos was, you know, um, hustling her for more money and he hustled him back and won. And then he tried to kill her and him and all this. And then when we learned more about um, they were very close when they learned more about her and other seasons, like phone conversations kind of thing. Apparently she was, I don't know, doing something and she was hiding some kind of an agent. So I don't know. We don't know. It's a mystery. And we've all been excited. Even one time Chris said he would like to get to meet Jeanette. Um, what was I talking about before I even got to where I was going? Oh, who do I think Jeanette is? Let me say this. If I am wrong, I'll say I was wrong, and I'll tell you who I thought it was going to be. And if I'm right, I'll say I'm right. And I promise. And I won't be like, oh, I knew all the time, and I really didn't. I promise you I will tell you the truth. As a matter of fact, Christina, if she's here, she knows She's saying, yes, Elaine. Christina knows who I think it is. And Christina, don't you tell. <laughs> she'll know because uh, she'll hold me accountable. All right. Um, I think the fact that Bill wasn't able to find out anything about Lucas in New Orleans is going to be pulled as a thread of those threads. He was undercover in New Orleans. You know who always thought of cool stuff like that? I miss her being in these conversations. Janine Marie. She always thought of fun stuff like that. On the other hand, on the other note, I have read somewhere today that there's going to be an announcement April 18th. Do you think it is the renewal? Where'd you see that? Where'd you see that? I didn't see that. Maybe. Yes, she works for the U.S. Treasury Department. Mm -hmm. And Christina's saying, mom's the word. I know, I could trust you. Um, Lucas didn't want to talk about San Francisco either when Fiona said she was from San Francisco and asked Lucas about it. Yes. Hmm. He knew about Jeanette. Yeah. We don't know. All right. Let's, let's get away from that. All right. So yes, she does write great, um, Lucas fan fiction. She does. Okay. So I wanted to talk about, let me see if I could go here. And move ahead on this. All right. I wanted to talk about the ratings. So it seems like, I don't know about you, but I'm on X. What a vicious place that is. People are so nasty. You print something. I mean, I can even show you. So you post something and people hop on it that you're not even talking to them. You're not on their space, but they get on yours to say such nasty, nasty things. So, um, Season nine, this is for the first episode. The live was 2.265. And then um, underneath was a 0.14. And then the uh, the plus three days is a 3.5. And they consider that to be the end result, the 3.5. And then season 10, which did not air in the same time slot. So it will be a little lower, less. It's So season nine and season 11 have, they're in basically the same time slot. There is a great difference in it. There's like a 20% difference from season nine to season 11, but hold your horses on that. I'm just talking about what's here. In season 10, um, you could see that there's a little bit of a difference, but again, it's a different time slot. So in general, and I know Brian Bird said this, in general, cable um, ratings have been going down about 30%. And Brian Bird even said this, and if you do your research on legit pages, you will find it. Not like just some random person writing whatever. And it cable, cable in general is going down 30%. That includes cable news, like CNN and Fox News. They're going down. That's cable. But if you look at Hallmark, they're really not going down 30%. Um, they're not that drastic. But anyway, the point is, when you look here, it's really not that drastic from 10 to 11. But there is a difference from here to here. I posted, um, let's see. Uh, oh, things trending. The question could be involving that. Okay, I'm just looking at that. Um, 
I'm thinking that I was hoping that things would even go get stronger and, and go more. I mean, the first and the last episodes tend to have big bangs and sometimes you get dribs and drabs in the middle. And I just want it to keep, you know, moving ahead, moving forward. And I posted something on X and what I posted at the time, I, it wasn't even in yet. And I posted this poster that was all over the place right here. And, and at the very, very bottom, if you look carefully, it says suspend at suspenders and buttons. So they're really good at making wonderful graphics. And this is theirs. And they always get their hands on numbers. And they had 2.4 live plus three, but it was actually 2.8. And I mentioned that. I said the rating is actually 2.8. Um, but keep in mind 10, which premiered in a different slot and it earned 3 million. And I said, I enjoyed the show, but hope to see the ratings approve. I don't want them to go down. I want them to improve. I'm not saying that they were going to fail. None of that. Well, you I was attacked from left to right. I crack up laughing. People said, this is one of the things they said. They actually, I think mixed me up with another podcast and said something to the effect where no one, you can't, no one will come on your show be, because of, I guess maybe they thought I was being negative. That's not what I said. What I said was they're not allowed to talk about when calls the heart. Like I cannot have people come on and when they do, they're told you can't talk about when calls the heart. It's not that they can't come on because that's not true. Anyway, my point is, listen, if you're out there listening to me, I wanted to talk to you. I didn't feel like sending it through X because things get misconstrued. Um, okay. Because of streaming, Hallmark still has huge steady numbers. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, Heart and Home Canada. Yes. Thank you, Gladys. Yes, this is where I was at. Allie um, there is dealing with her debt. Okay. I'm sorry. Those are things that we had talked about before. And um, what's this? It was for, for Canada and the Heart of Hardy Observer posted it um, about 418. Okay. Um, I don't know where the Hardy Observer got her information. Just like when this was posted, the stats that um, suspenders put up, they said it was um, 2.4 and it wound up really being 2.8. Someone had asked them, where do you get your information? And they said, we can't say, because I, I go right into Nielsen and it wasn't re it wasn't released yet. So anyway, that's not neither here nor there. We just have to be careful with our sources. That's all. Um, let's see. I heard from fans that it's because Chris encouraged fans to watch, but the numbers dropped since those are Lucas fans who like season nine and were not happy with season 10. I'm not watching on those networks. Chelsea, unless you have a, unless you have a Nielsen box, you know, this is my soapbox that I say, it doesn't matter if we watch or not. That doesn't, we're not part of the ratings. The ratings is a scientific gathering of um of viewers it has to be scientific because it's a demographic that they pay attention to the age and and the income and whatnot because that's how they know what kind of commercials to run across your streaming system or your cable tv and and they know what ads to put out and that's what makes revenue so you don't want to put an ad for ben gay when someone's 18 years old and don't need ben gay but maybe you need ben gay or something similar to that when you're like, I don't know, um, I don't know, what age do you need that when that happens? We get aches and pains, 50, 60, 70, I don't know, but I'm joking here, okay? Um, let's see, there are many countries that don't get the Hallmark Channel, including Australia, they would improve numbers if we had access. They don't run ads across for them, so they can't buy those products, so they do their own thing, that's what the whole thing is about ratings. That's the whole thing. It has to do with making money. Um, I heard, okay. All right. What does, what does this all mean? What does what mean? I was just showing you what the numbers were because it was all over. Suddenly everybody's posting numbers and I'm like, Oh, good Lord. We're all posting numbers. Usually we wait for Hallmark to come out, but we had people that were posting numbers that are not Hallmark people. And I was trying to figure out Oh, where'd you get your, what's, where'd you get the source? Like, I, I'm like, where's that coming from? How come I can't go into the Nelson page and can't find it? So anyway, that's why I'm putting that there. And then when people try to talk about it, some people get mad and think you're trying to say something negative. 
Believe me, I'm not. I'm not trying to say anything negative at all. All righty. Your age. Your age has aches and pains, Robin. <laughs> all right, friends. This is, this is it. You have any questions for me? Ask now. It doesn't mean I have any answers. I don't know. I don't know. Who do you think was that voice in the background for Gustav? It's my question. Whoever it was, let me know. Do you think Kathy will come back? We miss her. Well, that says a lot. Thanks. <laughs> no, not when it comes to um, when calls the heart. She will not. Will she do, we did Christmas reviews together. I've done them alone and she wanted to do them with me and that was a blast. She'll probably do that. She and I do things for um, what the um, the way home, which is phenomenal. If you don't, you don't watch, please do. Um, no, I don't think he'll be replaced. Um, I, she does uh, Republic of Doyle with me, which is amazing. So she, it's not, I'm not replacing my co-host. She's my co-host or I'm solo. <laughs> so um, if you do watch The Way Home, by the way, tomorrow at a weird time, because I happen to have a personal day, I could do this. Um, at one o'clock Eastern, uh, Chris Holden Reed, who is Thomas, who everybody loves, Thomas Coyle, he's going to be spending some time with me and we're going to be chatting. So I hope, I hope, I hope you are um, available and you could tune in. Oh, don't let me forget this. It is so great to, um, it is really good to, if you want to make a difference, to help trend, to get on X and to put your hat hashtags in put your hashtag in for um flomo if that's who you love put your hashtag in for hardies that really works because they are being tracked um push your hat put your hashtags in for uh chris mcnally lucas bichard i think there's one called end game en because that's elizabeth clever elizabeth nathan with a d and then game whoever it is you love put it out there but hardies is the big one that's a really good one um, Roxanne, thank you for your explanations tonight. It was helpful. Overall, overall, I enjoyed the episode. Good. Oh, no. I, I'll be at work. We'll have to watch the tape. I know. I'm sorry. Thanks for the podcast. Thank you, Lucy. Chris was very excited about season 11 and his character. Did he say anything specific about that? Uh, when he was interviewed? Yeah, he told us a lot. They allowed him to tell us that we'll meet Jeanette. Um, that there's going to be a, a scene where Elizabeth and um, he kind of tells Elizabeth and Nathan, go ahead, like not like you don't need my blessing, just go ahead. Um, I forget what else he said. He, he shared a lot. If you want to catch it, it's the one with Deidre Hall on E.T. Is it? No. What's her name? Behar. Deidre Hall. My goodness, that's an actress. <laughs> Sorry, Deidre Behar. Um, yes. Love Chris McNally. Julie actually took note that he was trending. I know. Yep. You're the bomb. Oh, thank you. You make me love podcast chats now. All right. And as usual, thanks for tonight. Great job. Well, thank you. Thank you for being here. It feels weird talking to myself and not hearing a voice. I miss my Kathy. All right. Good night, everyone. See you later. See you. If you're a Lucas person, see you on uh, Sunday at 10.05 in, in p.m. And if you are, um, you know, a hearty, see you on Monday, next Monday. And the way home is tomorrow at 1. I'm excited. Good night.